Good morning, Anchor. It's great to see you all this morning. We invite you to stand up and worship with us. Is always by my 
side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, it is my glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are. Oh, how he loves us. 
Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Amen. Amen. Anchor, have a seat. Thank you so much for joining with us this morning. If you don't know, I'm Pastor Kevin. Uh, welcome those who are watching online with us this morning. Uh, you've got some great things in store for you today. Uh, we've got some special guests with us. I want to say a great welcome to Michael and Emily. It's great to have you with us today. Uh, back up from North Carolina. And uh, we've got a lot of Holmans here again. Uh, man, it's wonderful to have you with us. Thanks for being here. And the reason why we've got so many Holmans with us today is because you get to hear from Pastor Tim Holman. Uh, Tim, of course, if you don't know, he's the founding pastor of Anchor Church way back in 1998. So Tim, Tim's getting pretty old. Um, much, much older than me. I'm, I'm sure that, that's, that's not right. That's, Oh, man, okay. Uh, but Tim was uh, here for 18 years. Uh, it's great to have him back. He's now uh, working with the YMCA, the Christian, Emph Christian Emphasis Director, uh, for the whole region, doing great things in our community uh, and many counties around. So uh, it's great to have you with us this morning, Tim. Tim, as you come up, um, let me pray, and we can dive into to your message. Lord God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for the incredible way that you love us, that you are always present with us. Lord, in our hardest troubles, in our greatest triumphs, you are there, you are faithful, and you love without fail, without end. Lord, even when we try to run, you are always there. You love us, you, you continue to be with us. Lord, this morning, uh, as we come in, uh, we've had different kinds of weeks. I, I know I'm uh, tired. I know several here had the work yesterday. I know uh, many may be looking for work. I know all of us have heavy hearts uh, for what's happening in Ukraine right now and, and different uh, realities that we walk in with. Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, to ease our minds, to set those issues and troubles at your feet, and to listen for your call today to hear from your word, and I pray for your blessings on Tim as he brings us your message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all again. Good to be back. And uh, so thinking about uh, the text for today, I've been reading through All right, so for you that are online, you didn't miss much. All right, but you could hear me, right? Now you can really hear me. Okay. So uh, you get to chapter 40, and there's supposed to be a little bit of tension that's built up. Um, God has these people that he's called to follow him, you know, the sons and daughters of Abraham, and uh, they've been his people for about a thousand years, which is a long time. And uh, the people of Israel at this point, they're, they've been uh, sent out of their home of Israel. They're living in um, what would be like Iran or Iraq area. They're, they're exiled. 
So they've been a people out of their home, you know, violently slaughtered, enslaved. I mean, like the worst of the worst. And they've been in that situation for a couple hundred years. And they can, they can track their family all the way back to Abraham. I mean, they can, they can track their genealogy back a thousand years, which is pretty impressive. I mean, I can, I can go back like two generations, maybe three. I don't know. Some of you maybe can go back a hundred years, which is pretty impressive. 400 years, pretty impressive. But the, the people of Israel, the sons and daughters of Abraham, like they've, they, they have to remember where did we come from and why are we here in exile and what happened to us. And, and so when they ask God really tough questions, it's not just kind of out of the blue. I mean, it's a God that they've been wrestling with for a really long time. I mean, America's not even 300 years old yet. You know, we, we think we've been having a hard time of it for, you know, a year, two years, and it hasn't been hard for two years, four years. Maybe your whole life has been hard. And so when the people of Israel are, are complaining to God, I mean, they're complaining after a couple hundred years. Now, they probably started complaining right away, but they can have been complaining for a long time with no answer. I mean, if you, let's say that you thought of yourself as part of your family, and your family has been keeping track of how long they've been praying to God with no answer. At what point do you think your family would have quit believing in God? Like after their first year of no answers? Five years, no answers? What if your grandma had gone her whole life praying and never heard from God? Would you have kept believing? I mean, it's, the scenario they're in is, is pretty dire. So as I was preparing the sermon and thinking about that text, I was thinking about, you know, our friends in Ukraine, brothers and sisters of the Lord that are trying to figure out what are they going to do this morning? You know, stories of teachers who, instead of going to their classroom, are now having to be assigned their defensive position to potentially repel uh, the invaders grandmas, grandpas, trying to figure out what station they're going to get sent to to patch up people that might get wounded. I mean, that's, we have fellow Christians in Ukraine and just the people of Ukraine. Uh, I'm sure they're complaining a little bit this morning as well. Like, God, what, what are you doing? Why are you allowing this to happen? Have you forgotten us? Have you been blind to what's been going on? Do you hear our prayers? I mean, I would think right now in the world, there's a lot of Christians that are, are praying this prayer that the people of Israel were praying while in captivity. Now, whatever you're going through today, it's not quite like our friends in Ukraine. So sometimes maybe that perspective is helpful for you to just, you know, I've been feeling some anxiety. I've been feeling overwhelmed. I've been worried about some legit things. And then I remind myself, we're not in Ukraine, so put it in perspective, but it doesn't mean that what you're going through isn't really important. It doesn't mean it isn't really complex. It doesn't mean that it's not worth being worried about. But I just share that to kind of put this in perspective, it's God's people complain to God all the time. So if you find yourself, you've been complaining to God a little or a lot, and you haven't really gotten the answer you want from God, you're not alone. I mean, God's people have been doing that for like 25 centuries now, like a long time. God's people have been crying out to the Lord, do you see us? Do you hear us? And so one of the things that we get to do today as God's people, you know, gather here in this space, is to look at the scriptures and to see what has God said in the past. I mean, when his people complained to him and cried out to him, you know, with a good heart and a right heart, but also a broken heart, like, what did God say then? And I hope that this is an encouragement to you as you think about what you've been going through and the prayers you've been praying and wondering, does God hear them? And when is God going to do something about it? And is God going to do what you want? Like, is God going to specifically answer your prayer the way you want? Or, like, what has God done with his people all along? Because it's not really just you. Like, if you're here today, you're, you're part of the people of God. So it isn't even just... How does God hear your individual prayer, which is significant? 
But your, it's not just your prayers that matter. It's, it's really our, also our prayers as the people of God. You know, what have you been praying for as a congregation? For you as Anchor Community Church, what have you been praying about for each other and for your church and for your community in Fort Wayne and Indiana and the world and Ukraine? You know, I mean, what, what have God's people in Indiana and America been praying for? I, God, is, it isn't just your prayers, but it's all of our prayers. And you could say, in America, it's like, well, has God been hearing the prayers of Christians in America? Is, is God hearing the prayers of the people in Ukraine? Yes. So then how do we know what his answers look like? What, what, do, what do we learn about God when we're crying out to him and it seems like maybe we start doubting a little bit? You know, what is God going to do? So what I want to do is have us walk through uh, Isaiah. So we're going to do a little responsive reading here. So I'm going to have you stand up. And if you can read that, you can read it with me out loud. If you can't read it, then... Uh, you can just say, you can just follow along. So what we'll do is I'll read the first line, and then I'll read with you the second line, and we'll just rotate. Does that make sense? All right? Okay. With whom, then, will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal worker cast it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and fashions silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground. Then he blows on them and they wither and whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one. Calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength. We're almost done. Why do you say, Israel, my, faith my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you, do you not know? know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He will not grow tired or weary. Last slide. He gives strength to the weary. Even youths grow tired and weary. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. You may be seated. You might be weary and faint from that long reading, <laughs> but you did it. So this isn't one of those sermons I can just pick one verse and just say, ah, this explains everything about why God doesn't hear your prayers and what to do when it seems like things are hard and you're wondering what God is up to. But I, I wanted to read a lengthy text with you just to invite you to go back to that text as you think about your life with God and who is God and what is he doing in the world and what is he doing in your life? But just to affirm, it's okay if you found yourself complaining about God and wondering about God. It means you care about God and you want God to be at work in the world. And then you kind of got a reflective, maybe God wants it more than I do. And so what does that mean about how God goes about doing his work and us kind of submitting to that? So what I want to do this morning is just take a few more minutes and walk through that text and highlight some of the things 
that the prophet Isaiah ha- says that God says about himself. So we talk about, you know, how do we live our life as Christians? How do we live as the people of God? It's just reminding ourselves, I mean, if God was going to say something to us in this moment, what would he say to us about who he is? And I hope that this is an encouragement to you. So in this text, a couple of things that God says to his people as he hears them complaining, you know, for a long time, and he's responding to them through the prophet Isaiah, out of all the things that God could say to himself, he reminds the people, the Lord is an everlasting God. Now, I want to put this in context of the people of Israel. So what would they have heard when he was saying this? So I'll kind of put this in context for them. You know, I mean, this is 1,000, 1,500, uh, this is actually 2,500 years ago. So, like, the culture has changed a bit, but people really aren't that different. But times have changed just a little bit. But I'll put this in context for what they would have heard but I think you'll be able to make some connections for you today. So when the text says, when the Lord says that the Lord is an everlasting God, part of what he's getting at is what we read at the very beginning of this text where they were talking about idols. Now, we don't talk much about idols. We don't think of idolatry much anymore. It's not really part of our world here in America. But in those days, idolatry was a big deal. So the text opened with, The prophet Isaiah, having the Lord ask, you know, what image are you going to compare me to? What idol are you going to compare me to? So part of what would happen is because we can't see God, we would create images of God. And in the Hebrew uh, scriptures and and, um, the Jewish faith and, and, and for Christians, we have no image of God. So it's not like you can look at the most powerful entities in the world and say, that's what God looks like, right? So we don't look at the sun and say, ah, that's what God looks like. We don't look at the moon and say, ah, that's what God looks like. We don't look at Mount Everest and say, that's what God looks like. We don't look at the three rivers of Fort Wayne and say, that's... We don't look at the most powerful piece of nature in our existence and say, oh, that's the image of God. Now, some people did. In their yearning to connect to some transcendent power that would somehow intervene for them, maybe. That would maybe look out for them, maybe. That might somehow grant them favor, maybe they would align themselves to what to them was the most powerful image in the world and worship it, hoping that somehow they could placate it. And God said, I'm not like that. Those, the sun comes and goes every day. You know, the moon comes and goes every day. Mountains fall and new ones rise up. Trees are coming and gone. I mean, it's, God is everlasting, not like nature. But also about the idols, right? So, and this is, Isaiah spends a lot of time in the text making fun of idols. In fact, a lot of early Christians were called atheists because they didn't believe in idols. That would just, if there's a God, there's an idol for it. And Christians, since they didn't believe in idols, they were actually called atheists because they didn't believe in the gods. And so I is just pointing out, all right, so if you're really wealthy, you're really poor, you go pick out a tree, you cut it down, you have a really skilled craftsman lay it over with gold, shape it into some kind of shape, put some silver on it, and put it on a pedestal. And eventually, it's either going to rot from the inside, so it won't last, or it'll fall over. And if an image or an idol would fall over, that would be a a huge disgrace, and that would just show that the power had left it. And all idols fall over at some time. And so when the Lord is saying, I am the everlasting God, I'm not like nature that comes and goes, and I'm not like something you carved out of a tree or a rock, which won't last. I'm beyond all that. I'm bigger than that. In fact, he goes on to say, he's the creator of the ends of the earth. So he's saying, you know, so you, some people might worship the sun. What if you worship the one who made the sun? You know, you think that the ocean is the most powerful entity on the planet, and Technically, it is. So some people might worship the ocean. What if you worship the one who made the ocean? So he, he invites his people to, to remember the times that they've been out in the world when they were a little overwhelmed by the world. So maybe just take a minute and to think back. When's the last time you were out in nature? Just take a minute to think. When's the last time you were out in nature? And when's the last time you were out in nature? And you were just really struck by something that was just amazingly beautiful 
Like just like it just made you thankful to be alive in the world. And that's what he's inviting his people to do. Like, yes, you're overwhelmed. Yes, there's a lot going on. You're pain, suffering. And God's just trying to have them kind of look up maybe from their own spirit, look up from their own problems and look up into the nature and, and kind of be amazed and awed and a little overwhelmed like how amazing and big and glorious and terrifying the world is. He's just inviting them to, to look up a little bit. You, there's a lot of research out there that shows that people that spend too much time looking into their phone, I mean, you know the research, right? Higher rates of depression, lower rates of self-esteem. You actually have poorer friendships, even though you might spend time with a thousand friends on social media, it actually undermines your real friendships. I mean, all the studies are out there, right? So isn't it ironic that even still today, God would have us say, look up. What do they say is some of the best things for mental health? Go outside. A friend of mine, she runs a ministry where she says, uh, research shows that if you walk under a green tree, there's chemicals from the trees that are proven that when you walk under a tree, those chemicals, they just kind of drop down on you and they, they boost your mood. And it was like science is just showing us the benefits of being in nature. Not that we needed science to tell us it's good to be outside, but welcome to America. You need science to tell you it's good to go outside. And God is telling us 25 centuries ago, when you're down in the dumps, when you're overwhelmed, get outside and look up and just wonder where did this all come from? You know, how did we get here? Sometimes it's okay to ask those big questions because sometimes we don't, right? Sometimes we don't really ever ask those big questions. But God's going somewhere with this. So then he asks, he just reflects with you. You're tired, you're weary, and the God who made all of this must have a lot of energy. Was it exhausting for him to create the whole universe? I mean, it says that he knows all the stars by name. I mean, have you seen, have you, have you looked at some of the, the pictures that come in from NASA that some of the stars you see are actually galaxies? I mean, it's just mind blowing. And it says God knows each of them by name. Like either God's really bored or he actually cares about what he creates. And I'm sure the names for his stars are not the scientific ones, you know, X3Z59-Q1. I mean, I'm sure he has wonderful names for his stars like Kevin. Or Tia. <laughs> right? I'm sure he has beautiful names for his stars. And I think the point is he's asking his readers, if God cares that much about the billions and billions of stars, think about who you're complaining to. Does God know your name? Does God know you? Does God care about you? How much more does God know what you're really going through we barely know what's going on in the universe. We barely know how many stars are. We barely understand how the world works, but God does. We barely know how we got in this mess. We barely understand what's going to happen next in our lives. We can't give a good account of how we got in this place, but God does. And so when we're complaining, sometimes what we're really complaining is about ourselves, right? We're projecting our situation on God. God, why'd you let me get here? And remember those first 39 chapters of Israel, or Isaiah, where God's pretty much, would you guys please listen to me? Please listen to me. I will tell you exactly what to do. Oh, you didn't listen to me. Okay, well, now, in light of the new problem you created for yourself, listen to me now. Okay, you didn't listen to me then either, right? So we keep on making it more complicated for ourselves, and God actually works with us in the world as it really works. And so when we get in a hot mess, is there an ever situation where God's like, you know what, I'm just going to... Take care of the whole hot mess, and you can just start over as if nothing happened. I mean, that just never happened, is it? Like, whatever snare you in, God meets you there, and then he'll work with you there. And I know sometimes we want God to just make it easy for us. When you read through the Bible, there's just no scenario. There's no story where God's like, you know what? I kind of feel bad for you. I'm just going to make it easy for you. Because when God showed up, did he make it easy for himself when he showed up as Jesus Christ? No. I mean, who are the people he hung out with? All the easy-to-get-along-with people? 
I mean, did he find all the introverts and then talk the whole time? Like, this is great. All they do is listen. <laughs> or was Jesus the introvert and he just hung out and all everyone else talked? Like, this is great. I don't have to do any talking. I mean, when Jesus showed up, did he find the most pleasant people, the most well-balanced people? Did he find the people that, like, these people are so easy to get along with? No. I mean, he went and found the hardest people to get along with. In fact, he invited them to, like, be part of his inner circle. He even invited people who were going to betray him to be closest to him. So see, when we, it's okay to complain about God, but when we do, when we go back and read through, like, well, how does God interact in the world that he made? How does he interact with his people that he loves? God doesn't take the easy route. God, it's not like God finds the hardest way to do about it. He just works with people as they are. And what do we tend to do? Pretty much always make it harder, don't we? We pretty much always make it harder. And you think ever God ever is like, oh my, do you think God shakes his head at you? Like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they did that. Wow, I'm shocked. I mean, you think God ever just kind of looks over your life and just clucks his tongue? Like, or blinks his eyes? Do you think you ever leave him speechless? No. I mean, like he's been at this a really long time, right? I mean, he's pretty much seen all that people do with their life. And he's always inviting you to look up and to remember the God who made everything knows you and loves you. He doesn't grow tired or weary of helping you. You don't exhaust him. You don't wear him out. If he's not acting the way you want, it's not because he's gotten bored or tired. He's always at work in our lives. The real question is, are we willing to listen and let him work in our life the way he wants to. So the last thing I want to point out is obviously we rarely ever understand what he's doing. And we're just going to have to trust that he knows what he's doing. But in that, he meets us in our weariness. He meets us when we're tired. And I guess to me this is just a little overwhelming to think about. But out of all the things going on in the world, out of all that he's created... You know, we can think about, um, you know, uh, God as, as the creator of the world. And so, you, th you know, God's not like the sun. He's not like the rocks. He's not like something. He's not a stone image that he made. He's not made out of wood. He's, he's not made out of plastic. He's not made out of metal. Whatever God is, he cares about you, and he, he gives you strength, and he gives you hope. So that's the last thing that I just want to close with is this invitation to you. It says, the text says that when you hope in the Lord, he gives you strength. And so part of that is how big is the God you hope in? So for some of you, your, your God's actually really small. Your God is kind of whatever you can imagine. Or your God is shaped by the really, really bad examples that have been part of your life. And so the God that you have a hard time believing in is not actually God. You know, the God that you're struggling with, I would struggle with too, you know. The God that maybe you have some friends, they hate God. Well, the God they hate, I hate too because the God that they've kind of been introduced to is not necessarily the real God. But the real God says that when you hope in me and you trust me, even though you can barely understand what I'm doing, even though you, life doesn't always make sense, when you, when you put your hope in me, you will find new strength for the hot mess you are in, for the complicated scenario you're in. Life is a hot mess. It is, life is hard, but when you, you put your hope in me and what I have done and what I am doing and what I can do, you'll have strength for the journey. So obviously Jesus Christ is, our, is the one we imitate in this, right? I mean, when Jesus showed up, even as you read the story, you're like, this is interesting how this is going. It's not how I thought God would work, you know, how Jesus interacts with people. It, it's actually disturbing because he's more graceful and yet more judgy, right? I mean, he, he really calls out truth in a way. It's like, oh my goodness, that's hard to handle. At the same time, he's so forgiving. You're like, that's hard to handle. I can't, I can't handle how truthful he is. I can't handle how forgiving it is. 
And that's kind of how God wants to work in your life. The truth he wants to bring you, it's really going to bother you. I mean, the truth he wants to tell you about yourself and him, it's going to be really hard. So sometimes we don't always want the truth. At the same time, the grace and forgiveness he wants to give you is actually going to be really hard to take. It's going to be uncomfortable to take that much grace. It's going to be uncomfortable to take that much forgiveness because whatever he gives us, what does he want us to do with it? He wants us to give it away, right? Grace is not just grace for you. The grace he gives you is really for everyone connected to your life. The truth he gives you isn't just for you. The truth he gives you is supposed to be a blessing to everyone in your life, you know, because it's not even just about you. I mean, you don't exist as just you, right? I mean, you've got your family, but if you're a Christian, you exist as part of the body of Christ. You exist as part of this congregation. You know, it's not even just you. It's even whatever it is you're going through, it might be for the benefit of someone else in the church. It might be for another believer somewhere in the city that then God randomly connects and you share your story and it's encouraging to them. And you may not say, oh, gee, I'm glad I went through this really hard time so I could help someone. But I know for my life, there's a deep satisfaction knowing that the really hard thing I went through was helpful to someone. Amen? So why did God have me go through those hard times? I don't know. And to be frank, I'm still a little upset with God about some of the things that he had me go through. Like, I I still got some bitterness, just to be frank. I'm not happy about some of the hard things that God's had me go through. But I'll tell you what, whenever something good happens because of it, oh, I can't tell you how thankful I am. Like, it wasn't wasted. Like, it wasn't a hard time that got wasted in bitterness and sorrow, but that God brought something out of it. So I want to close in prayer and um, wrap up our time together. But as you think about what God wants to do in your life with whatever is going on, and maybe it's a little bit or a lot, and the question is, how? what's your hoping been like? Is it a a bit of cynical hoping, a little bit of skeptical hoping? Is it a little bit of doubtful hoping? Uh, has it been a little sarcastic hoping? Is a little bit of grieving hoping? I mean, there's, there's no just pure hoping. It's hoping <laughs> mixed up with all the stuff of life. And I just want you to hold on to, but if you're still hoping, like with the like smallest seed, like a mustard seed, if you're still hoping even just a little bit, that's enough. And that God will give you the strength you need through the people he's placed in your life and through his Holy Spirit to help you get through so that you can be an encouragement to others. Let's pray. God, thanks for this word you've given me and shared with us about the hard work of hoping in you when things are really hard. But we also ask you that when we hope, give us the strength we need. Give us the encouragement we need. Keep binding us to one another so that we can both receive the encouragement you have for us through the people you put in our life, but also when you encourage us that it can be a blessing to the people you've put in our life. In this moment, we just want to submit to you, Lord, some of the most difficult situations that we're in, and we want to submit that to you right now. Help us to take our eyes off of them just long enough to keep our eyes on you, the everlasting God who does not grow weary, the creator of the heavens and the earth that knows the stars by name and you know us and you love us and you are with us, calling us to serve you in the hardships and through the hardships and because of the hardships. And we also lift up the people of Ukraine and the church and the the people of Christ in Ukraine. We lift them up, that you would bless them in these horrific trials and that through them your light would shine in the darkness. And God, if there's anything we can do to be a support to them, let us know. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. It's great to hear from you. Great word this morning. Our hope. uh, Just looking over there at our, our sign here, our motto. We have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. Uh, Thank you for that word. 
Uh, church, at this time, uh, it's kind of our transition time where we take care of some business. Uh, ushers, if you want to prepare for the offering, and uh, kids, uh, anyone grade five and down, uh, you're welcome to head uh, out and down the hallway uh, with Karen and the other teachers uh, for your class time now. Uh, so kids, you can uh, be dismissed, and church, if you want to prepare to give to the ministry of Anchor, uh, now's the time to do that. Um, it's good to, good to have you back, Tim. Good to hear from you. Uh, I just want to say uh, thanks again. I, I try to do this often, uh, but I want to just continually do it. Uh, I, I love being uh, part of this church. I love being uh, part of Anchor that wants to um, dive in, that wants to make a difference, that wants to grow disciples, that wants to make a difference here in our neighborhood, that has a heart and a passion uh, for our city, for our families, and even for our world. So thank you for listening to Christ, for, for just being cognizant and conscious uh, of those greater needs, those greater things that, that Christ is calling us to. Um, as we prepare to, to take up the offering, uh, I want to pray again, um, but I also just wanted to say thanks. Thanks to those that give their finances. Uh, thanks to those that give their time uh, th and energy, and thanks to um, those that give their prayers. Uh, never underestimate the power of your prayers uh, for the people of this church, for the ministry of this church, for, for me and everybody else here. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for today. Uh, I thank you... Um, Man, I thank you for this new ministry, this new life that was breathed in to this spot here at 3rd and Schilling all the way back in 1998. Uh, I thank you for the ministry of the Hallmans through all those years, and I thank you um, that they continue uh, to minister, to share your love with those around them. Lord, I thank you for all that's happening uh, here right now in our, uh, from the nursery all the way up to our oldest member, Lord. I thank you for the work that you're up to at Redemption House and Lexi's Voice and so many other ministries that we get to play a part in. Lord, I pray that you would uh, just help us to open our eyes, help us to not be afraid to ask uh, how you would want us to step up and make a difference in whatever way you call us to. And Lord, I pray for this offering this morning that whatever is received would be used uh, directly and specifically for your glory uh, to make um, a difference in this neighborhood, to be a blessing uh, to your kingdom, to grow your kingdom, to grow disciples. Lord, whatever you call us to, we want to be your people doing your thing, your business, your way. Let it be so, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you can come forward. If you're uh, watching with us online this morning, uh, I do want to remind you there's easy options for giving online. Uh, you can find that uh, attached to our Facebook page. I think our website is actually down right now, so you'll need to, to find that link uh, for online giving on our, on our Facebook page. But thank you. Uh, a few announcements. We've got uh, a few things going on this month. Uh, where's Paul? Where's my man Paul at? Hey, Paul. So in, in two weeks, uh, Paul and the Jesters have their big performance happening at the University of St. Francis. That's on Saturday the 12th at 3 in the afternoon. Uh, or no, no, Saturday the 12th is at 6 in the evening, and Sunday the 13th is at 3 in the afternoon. So you can see Paul right back there. He's got all the uh, info on that. Go and show your support for Paul and the, and the jesters and all they're doing there at St. Francis. Uh, our men's ministry is going well. Uh, we have our next men's breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's not too early. Who are you kidding? That's just right for breakfast. Uh, on Saturday the 26th, uh, of course, we've got great Sunday school classes happening here every week with Mr. Scott Harris up here, man in the camera, wave and say hi, that attractive fella. And as Rick, Rick might be downstairs this morning, uh, but Rick does a great job with his class as well. Uh, our Zoom Bible study has moved to Fridays, Fridays at 10 a.m., uh, and that's something you can jump in on any time. Uh, and from any location that has an internet connection, right? So Friday's at 10 a.m. 
Uh, we have something special happening with Redemption House today. Is that right, Tommy? We've got a graduation today. We've got a graduation? <laughs> and would the graduate please stand up? Laqu- Laquina? Yeah? All right. Congratulations. Kathy, okay. All right. Fantastic. First missionary, four o'clock. All right, Logan. Congratulations, ladies. God bless you on whatever comes next for you. And uh, you are always, always welcome here at Anchor. We'd love to have you continue to be a part of us. Uh, Any other announcements today? Anything else that we're... um... Oh, uh, baptisms. We want to schedule a baptism uh, as soon as possible. I know we have a a few interested. um... Shoot your hand up real quick if you're interested. All right, we've got Mary Warren, Echo, Kyla... Not Tiffany, not <laughs> Tiffany, but Taryn. I may have called like everybody Tiffany this morning. I don't know about <laughs> Taryn. Okay, all right. Uh, anybody else? If, even if you're not sure, if you just want to talk about that, uh, please contact me this week. See me after service or, um, you know, Messenger, Facebook, whatever. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about baptism so we can get that on our calendar and celebrate together. Uh, all right, I think it's time for Sermon Sequel. Um, so I need someone that can uh, pass the microphone for us. And Tim, come on up. Sermon Sequel is our, our chance to talk together. Yeah, I'll get one. Uh, and it's, it's your chance to kind of join in the conversation. So we'll have a few questions that anyone can chime in on, just Raise your hand up. We'll bring the microphone around so that uh, the folks watching online can hear your responses. But don't be shy. Uh, You're welcome here. Thank you so much, Logan, uh, to chime in. Just keep your response like in the one to two minute range so a lot of folks get a chance to chime in. Um, I'm going to help Tim out by uh, picking names, just calling everybody Tiffany probably this morning. (laughs) But... um, (laughs) Oh, wait, is my stool shorter or am I? You just got to stand up straight, man. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Let me... Here, I'll slouch just for you. Okay. <laughs> um, Tim, uh, take the lead, man. All right. So uh, maybe as you're listening to the sermon, was, a, was there a scenario in mind where maybe that's what's been prompting you to complain to God you know, kind of the, for you, you know, anything you'd like to share, just kind of a 15 second descript of maybe what for you has been the scenario you're in that's been causing you to do a little bit of complaining, just to be honest, right? Just a moment of honesty. Anyone want to share? I'll say coming when I first came to Redemption House, I did a lot of complaining. I was mad because I had to be there, but maybe it was God's plan to put me in a place that I need to be. So, amen. With that, I'll pass. Amen. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Someone else, what's something going on in your life that's kind of what you've been complaining about? Sherry? Mine right now is work. I don't want to change things at work. I don't want them to go that way, and it's leading me. I don't know what's going to happen. It's like, am I going to have to get another job, or am I going to have to comply with it? It's mm. just a lot of things going on at work. Okay. okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably a common one for a lot of us, right? Something always going on at work. I see Bev there in the back. Bev? I complain at first when bad things begin to happen to me, but then I begin to see how Lord is using me in a situation, you know what I mean? And 
And so then it turns around to, I'm glad to do that, you know? So it's not, he don't often put us in easy situations. He usually puts us in hard situations because of the people he's trying to reach through you. Mm. Yeah, well said. Hmm. Well said. Ken, is that a hand up or you, you're <laughs> helping hold up the church right there, I think. <laughs> Ken looks, doesn't Ken, everybody look back there at Ken, doesn't he just look like, a, looks like he could be a pro lineman or something, man. He's the guy you don't want to mess with. Ken's got his arm up, I know you can't see online, but he actually has it in the corner of the door, like he's holding the doorway up. He's a, Scott, what's happening online for us? A uh, couple people. First, Diane says, I've been to four funerals in the last two months. Hmm. People have asked me, how do you do it? And after I lost my husband and my son, I said, God is my helper. Hmm. I was just at my aunt's funeral Saturday. I truly rely on God to carry me on through this sad time. Amen. 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 Second, Vinny says, after he lost his mom, even to this day, he asks, why did she have to go through all the pain just to be taken anyway? Mm. I'm glad she is pain-free. She is free. Still, why did she have to go through so much? Hopefully, counseling and prayer will help me with this. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I know all of us have multiple things that we could have shared or maybe share with a, a smaller group of, of friends. But it's it's... I'd rather you just be honest with yourself about all the things you're complaining about. Like, even if you just got to list it out, it's not a matter of shaming yourself. Like, oh my gosh, I got a hundred things I'm complaining about to God. Uh, you know, God's, God's like, bring it on. I mean, maybe make the list twice as long. Like, it's because you care. I mean, you only complain because you care. I think God would rather have people that care about what's going on in the world than be mad about it than people that go through life and see terrible things happen and shrug and move mm -hmm. on. I mean, apathy would be a lot worse, right? I mean, so a lot of your complaint is just because you care so much, and God cares too. You know, and God actually cares more, and he wants to care through you and us, right? So there's a few things you can do all by yourself, but most of the things that are going on in the world require people working together. There's just not many things that are so simple that you can solve all by yourself. Most of the things require us to work together to care for people. Hence, why it's so important to gather every Sunday. Both, maybe, maybe you needed to be here. Maybe you're like, you know what? I don't need to go. I'm good, but I'm going to go for other people. Like, you know, like, I don't need a sermon. I don't need to sing, but I'll go for others. You know I mean? Just that whole posture is just putting yourself in a space where then if everything's good for you, then show up so you can be good for others. Does that make sense? Hmm. And, well, you know, I have nothing to complain about. Great. Get around people who do have something to complain about, not so they can bring you down, but so you can bring them up. So a couple other things. Just, uh, can you read that? I tried to make the font big. I don't know. It's <laughs> I can't just, either, man. Can't, it's okay. Old. It has nothing to do with our age. Uh, <laughs> in, in the back, just, just to be honest, in the back, you can't read that? You can? Oh, whew. Okay. Good. So I listed a couple things from the text of what God said about himself. You know, God is the everlasting God. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. The Lord will not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can fathom. Is there one of those that kind of sticks out for you? Like you kind of you needed to hear that this morning. Like as you're thinking about who is God and what is God doing in the world. Is there one of those that was just affirming for you? Like they just, it was an encouragement to you. And what you're going through, this is what God says about himself, and, and you needed to hear that this morning. So we've got Jerry right here, and then Steve on the other side. Jerry, go ahead. One that sticks out to me a lot is growing tired. We, as humans, imperfect, we do get tired a lot of times and all that stuff. But God never, never gets tired. So we just... That's an encouragement right there. <laughs> Even though we do get tired, mm -hmm. just think about him never getting tired. That just builds us up. Yeah, amen. It, 
Jerry, I, I amen that as well, man. That's an amazing thought. I'm tired this morning, honestly. How many of you feel a little tired, right? Like, tired, it's, it's kind of our, uh, it's, it's contagious or it's all around us. Uh, and that struck me this morning as well. Man, God never gets tired. Uh, and then the way you phrased it, that, that God never gets tired of me. That was, that was a good word, buddy. That, that was I said that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> It is good. Or yeah. God told you to say it or something. Well, I'm going to give you credit because I didn't know I said that. So good word, Kevin. <laughs> Steve Neely. It's kind of the same thing with uh, growing tired and understanding both because, you know, as parents, you look at kids and roll your eyes at some of the things that they do, some of the things that they've done, some of the things you find out later that they did that they, you didn't <laughs> think they had done. Same way as an employer, you, you know, you look at an employee sometimes, you think, is, you know, is the hamster wheel really turning in there or not? <laughs> but, you know, now you think of God, though, with us. He's sitting back, rolling his eyes at us, saying, did you really just do that again? And then the, the amount of understand that he, and understanding that he has and the mercy and grace that he continues to show us over and over and over again, no matter how many times he rolls his eyes, no matter how, <laughs> how frustrated he gets with us, he still shows us that understanding and that mercy and grace. Amen. Hmm. Amen. I just thought about, you know, the scriptures you put there. And it's, you know, those are the things that we see in him. And if we see them in him and rely upon them, he says that he, you will mount up with wings of eagles yeah. and soar. You know, so that is like a promise if you can hold on to the storm. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. Thank you. I see Michelle over here. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Tiffany. Nicole. Nicole. Um, With a K. Me, yes. Yeah. For me, um, his understanding no one can fathom. Because for me, I struggle with my pride and my ego. And I always hmm. want to ask why and try to understand. And then when it starts to get real bad, I need to remember, I'm not going to understand it, so why am I driving myself crazy trying to figure it out? Because it's not my job. Hmm. Sure, good word. Huh. I can relate to that. <laughs> Some, relate to yeah, that. it's a step of trust, a step of faith. Yeah. For me, thinking about the Lord gives strength to the weary, I, I think I've gotten through practice, like I, I believe like he's everlasting, he's the creator, and I coming in prayer, like I can give things over because I've had to, you know, right? There's a point where you've had to give things over so much that you can come to a place of peace. But I've struggled lately with like, okay, believing is he is he actually doing something? Like is he <laughs> it's not that I don't believe that it's worth it to pray for him to act, but sometimes when you've prayed about certain situations over the days and weeks and years and it doesn't feel like it changes it can feel hard to actually trust that he's going to that he does act so holding on and I, I was praying this last night you know like okay are you acting do you do you act um but like I need to hold on that God he acts he gives strength to the weary it's not just about settling my heart to trust and kind of just be passive and accept, like sometimes that's a part of it, but he actually acts. He gives strength, and I, I need to believe that. Amen. Amen. So I will say this with my work with the YMCA, you know, part of the emphasis of the Y is a focus on spirit, mind, and body. And so they really coined that, or they didn't come up with that all by themselves, but reflecting on the scriptures about 1900, 1905, there was a real emphasis on the human as just a mind and a body, you know, like it's just the physical. There's your body and there's your brain. That's all that exists. And so the YMCA as a Christian organization really felt like one of the things that we contribute to people is to teach them they also have a spirit. You know, so as Christians, we're like, yeah, obviously, but you should be surprised, I guess, how often maybe you forget you have a spirit and when it comes to having strength. So we talk about the spirit of the Lord. And in the Hebrew, the word spirit is the same word for breath. It's, very, it's related to the word for life. So we've learned now that for a lot of people, you don't breathe right. There's a lot of people who 
once they get taught how to breathe properly, all of a sudden have more energy. Less anxiety, yeah. yeah. Like the, the power of breathing in is related to your spirit. So you, obviously it's physical, it's good for your mind, but spiritually, you know, when you are breathing as part of your praying, you know, there's a breath prayer where you breathe, you, so you're praying the name Jesus. So you breathe in and say the first part of Jesus' name, and then you breathe out the last part of Jesus' name. So that's a, an ancient prayer that actually comes from uh, Russian Christian mystics, where they just do that all day. They just pray Jesus. Breathe in and breathe out. Just hold your breath. And it's transformative for them in their own energy, but also in their centering and abiding in Christ. As I just encourage you, as you think about just some of the practical things you do when it comes to the spirit of the Lord and hoping in the Lord is, you know, dwelling on the Lord, you know, engaging in some really old practices that people figured out a long time ago to give them more energy and more focus is just to breathe in the spirit of the Lord uh, through prayer. One of the things we learned, I'll close with this, one of the things we closed or learned at the Y when it comes to spirit, there was a doctor, heart doctor that came in and was sharing how he used to be a mind, body, heart doctor. So when it came to recovery practices, he would give them some physical things to do, and then he'd give them some mental things to do, but he just wasn't seeing the recovery that he wanted from people recovering from heart surgery. You know, I mean, they got to build up their routines again. They got to change their habits. I mean, it's really a life change is what he's trying to prescribe for them, and it, the, the mind, body prescriptions weren't working. And so he said I, he became convinced by the data that people have a spirit. And so the medical research for him identified three things that people can do to get healthier that are directly tied to their spirit. So um, I'll tell you about that later. Okay. No, okay, I'll tell you now. So, <laughs> so the first thing was uh, they, 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 um, you, you've got to engage with your friends. You've got to spend time with friends. You've got to have a community. So, you know, I mean, part of the practice was if you could spend time at least once a week in community with friends, where you just kind of spend time together for like an hour or so, like what you guys do here. <laughs> so spend time with friends. The, the other one was ha uh, get clarity on meaning and purpose in your life. In order to be healthier and recover from heart surgery, but also to have a stronger spirit, you got to have clarity and purpose. And some of that comes from just having you know, a mentor in your life who you could tell anything to, who could kind of help you listen to what does God want you to do with your life. And there's a lot of people that could do that for you. So having good friends, good friends, having a sense of clarity and purpose. And the third thing that he would prescribe to people is go volunteer and serve somewhere. <laughs> that'll, that'll help your spirit get stronger and help you put into practice the changes you need to happen in your life. So I just encourage you with that. You know, that's part of the work we do at the YMCA. It's part of what you do as a congregation. It's part of what Pastor Kevin does. But I just encourage you in that as you think about hoping in the Lord, what, do, what can we actually do? Like, I'm going to hope in my heart, but now what? And so I just encourage you, at least in those three things, you know, if you need to reconnect with some good friends, put in the energy to do that because it takes energy to connect with friends. And then... Um, to remind yourself what God's purpose is for you. And if you're not sure what that is, you're having some doubts about it, talk to your good friends about it or Pastor Kevin. Uh, and also uh, find ways where you can volunteer to serve in a way that kind of fills your cup and fills up others. And it doesn't solve all the problems of the world, but it's one of the ways that God gives you hope when you're weary. Thank you, Tim. Excellent, man. Excellent. Um, all right, let's... Uh... Let's go ahead and close our service today with some song. Uh, so let's stand and sing, and let's give Tim Holman, man, it's great to have you back with us. Thank you.
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. For every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing the goodness of God. Amen.
I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet I Savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh praise the on his greatness this morning he's above our imagination but he is with us and he is for us
Ah, thank you, church. It's great to worship with you. God bless you. I want to pray one more time. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We celebrate you today. Lord, I thank you again uh, for the ministry of the Hallmans, for all that they have uh, meant to anchor over the years, for uh, their blessing of being with us today. Lord, I pray that you would bless them, guide them, direct them. Lord, I pray also that we would place our hope in you and Amen. you alone. Amen. Lord, be Amen. our hope, be our strength, be our refuge through the storm. Because you're the one. You're the one who is worthy, worthy of all that we are. Amen. So, Lord, go with us now. Bless our week. In your holy name, amen. 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 May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. And also with you. Have a great week. Congratulations, graduates. God bless you.